Hello, this is Charles Forkart, November 15th, 2017. This is number 30 in the series On the Road with Charles Folkart. I want to welcome anyone who's new here, and I want to thank those of you who support this channel. And that includes uh, many different ways, and uh, those who support this channel are very much appreciated. I want to thank you. And I've been able to talk with uh, a few of you on the phone and uh, others through email and other means. And I really appreciate uh, your encouragement. And I, I want to do something a little different here. I've had a chance to uh, relax a little bit. I haven't had to work too much on the vehicle here yet. But uh, yesterday I had to replace the battery in the engine compartment. It was... It wouldn't start back in in uh, cow spell sometimes and it wouldn't start in the parking lot in pocatella and it wouldn't start here the other day and i had to if so anyway i replaced the battery it only had 200 cranking amps i believe it's called but i got a new battery now that cranks up to 925 amps and i put the new battery in yesterday and phew, started right up baby that was uh a good feeling I don't think I'm gonna have a problem with the battery for a while it's got an 84 month uh, kind of a warranty that if something goes wrong it's prorated in two years something goes wrong so I'm good to go with the battery but I you know there's a lot of uh, a lot of Christians who uh, who don't get it when it comes to worshiping the Father and the sun and uh, I wanted to use this video as a chance kind of a foundation for other videos in the future that are going to relate to this video so this is the beginning of a series of uh, videos that have to do with spiritual things so if you don't like spiritual things and you think I'm a Bible thumper then this video is not for you and I'll see ya. But for those of you who appreciate spiritual things, uh, let's move on to John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24, shall we? So we're in the Word of God. We're in chapter 4 of John 23 and 24. This is when the Lord Jesus is speaking with the woman at the well. And remember that she was an, she was an, an Israelite. She said in, a, in the previous verses that our father Jacob gave us this well. It's a different subject, but you can contrast that with the woman in the uh, Matthew 15, who the Lord didn't have any time for at all until she acknowledged the fact that he was uh, the Lord and Master. But that's another subject for another time. Here we have Yeshua explaining to an Israelite that the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. For the Father seeks such to worship him. The Father doesn't seek worship. He seeks us. He seeks true worshipers that shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For Yahweh is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And they, they go together, in spirit and in truth. And uh, I want to draw your attention to this word must, must worship him. It's absolutely necessary. It's binding. There's no other option. That's a condition that needs to be met. They must worship him in spirit and in truth. I want to bring this to other scripture verses that relate to worship in spirit and in truth. So let's go have a look at those shall we but before we do that let's lay a f foundation so we have a, a better understanding of these scripture verses 
Uh, language, language is the incarnation of thought. Our thinking is not revealed to others until we express it in a language, in words. And the word logos is from uh, the Greek word in Strong's G3056. And it's from a word of G3004, lego, which means to lay forth, relate in words. And it's usually of a systematic or a set um, discourse. So, logos is something said. And it includes the thought, and it's also a, a, a it's also the divine expression. Th that is, y y Yeshua, and I'm going to explain this uh, a little more as we go on here. And uh, the word logos means communication. So, and I'm going to relate that here to, in a minute to uh, John one one, and also back to uh, the creation. But uh, I wanted to bring this to your attention here. And, and uh, you, you know, have you ever thought what language, what, uh, yeah, what language, what, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? You know, uh, how, does, how, does, uh, how does God, how does Yahweh, what language does he speak? Does he speak English? Does he speak uh, Korean? Does he speak Thai? Does he speak Arabic? And I think uh, w w we have the answer here in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2. Yahweh, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in time past unto the fathers. Now that's the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were and they are the Israelites. And that doesn't include everyone. That doesn't include the Somalians and the Haitians and the Aborigines and the Mexicans and the Mestizos. He's, Yahweh spoke in time past unto the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm going to put in here as an insert, uh, that also includes their offspring of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That means King David and King Solomon and Samuel and, and, and all the rest of them. He did that through the prophets. And he has, in these last days, spoken to us in son. I would suggest that the language that Yahweh speaks is in sun not in english not in french not in german but in sun and uh it's been said back in um, exodus when moses asked who do, who do i tell the israelites who sent me and the lord answered uh, yahweh answered i am that i am and I take that to mean that God can express himself any way he wants to, in any form that he wants to. And that uh, a lot of people don't understand why we refer to uh, the Lord, which is not a name, it's a title, why we refer to uh, the Lord. Uh, to God as Yahweh, and, and that's because that's his name. And there's there's a lot more there, but that's not the subject of this um, of this talk. So I'm going to move on from there. And uh, uh, Yahshua, being Yahweh, has explained God, the Father, who is the Spirit. In other words. If you want to know with what Yahweh, if you want to know what the Father thinks and what the Father is like and who the Father is, remember the Father is a spirit and no man has seen God at any time, but the Son has revealed him. 
it's the son that is the expression of the father it is yeshua that is the expression it is the thought yeshua is the thinking and we can understand the father only through the son only through the son because the father has spoken to us the israelites in son and that brings us here to john uh, 118 no man hath seen yahweh at any time the only begotten or the unique son yeshua who is in the bosom of the father not was in the bosom of the father which is in the bosom of the father he hath declared him that word declared means to um, to lead forth to expound to set forth or expounded he hath explained him he has expounded yahweh because he is yahweh and then also one more verse john chapter 14 verse 9 and the lord is speaking and uh, he he that hath seen me hath seen the father because philip says lord show us the father and it is sufficient and jesus said unto him have i been such a long time with you and yet thou hast no, not known me he that hath seen me hath seen the father and how sayest thou then show us the father when we look at and we consider the lord yeshua we see the father now that brings us back here to the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeks such to worship him Yahweh is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And uh, we're gonna bring, I'm going to bring you back to John chapter 1, and let's have a look at that, shall we? Now, here we are in John chapter 1. And remember, uh, John, the apostle, he was the one that laid his head on the breast of y Yeshua. I believe that uh, John had the most intimate relationship with Yeshua of all the apostles. And John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, was the Logos, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You could also say, and the Word was Yahweh. The same being the Word was in the beginning with Yahweh. And all things were made by him, that is, Yeshua, and without him was not anything made that was made. So we have the, we have Yahweh expressing himself in the person of Yeshua because the Logos was Yahweh. And he was in the beginning with Yahweh, and all things were, were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. He's the creator. Yahweh is Yeshua, and Yeshua is the incarnation of what Yahweh is thinking, the thoughts of Yahweh. So if you want to know what God is like, all you need to do or what you must do is look at Yeshua. There's a lot more that we could uh, say. There's a lot more that could be said, a lot more that could be brought out. But I just want to bring up one thing here. You don't need to be in a, quote, church building in a church. Uh, well, in a church building to worship God. And there's two conditions, remember. You must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
And that's why I don't go into a Judeo-Christian church because the lack of truth there is just appalling. You're in there with a mixed congregation, every uh, mix of people. The Bible was written by Israelites, for Israelites, to Israelites, and about Israelites. That's the Caucasian race. You get in a congregation with non-whites, that's not where truth is. You get in a congregation where there are uh, men and women that are having sex with each other and all other, all other forms of sin, and it's condoned by the pastor, and he himself is in sin because he's not telling the truth. He's a 501c3 agent of the government. He's forbidden to speak the whole truth. And so how can what they call worship service come worship with us? And I know people are going to say that's just, Charles, that is outrageous. How can you say that those people are not worshiping God? I'm not saying it. Scripture is saying it. Must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Those two conditions must be met. It's not an option. It is absolutely necessary to worship the Father who seeketh such to worship him. Those conditions are necessary, and I, I'll, I'll be try to find those conditions where they're being met in the Judeo-Christian church who actually put the Esau Edomites above the Caucasians, above the Israelites, because they don't know the truth and they won't go anywhere near it because they'll lose their congregation and they'll lose their cushy job. Pastors today have a cushy life, folks, a very cushy, easy life. They don't want to do anything to jeopardize their lifestyle. And that's why the Lord Jesus says in the day of, in the uh, era of the church of Laodicea, the congregations are lukewarm and he wants to spew them out of his mouth. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting this channel. And may the grace of God, Yeshua, be upon us all, for we most certainly need it. See ya.